Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining in another week. We have a great show planned for you today. Later on the show, I'll have with me WTRF News Director Brenda Danehart, who was recently inducted into the West Virginia Broadcasters Hall of Fame. So excited that I'll be speaking to Brenda here today. I have someone right here from right in the building on the show today. But first, we're going to talk about some current issues. First of all, we talked last week about the West Virginia special election on the constitutional amendment to issue the bonds for the roads and bridges, and that passed by an overwhelming margin, and we're so happy to see that because we do need to get our roads and our bridges fixed if we want to bring business into this state, as I talked about last week. And so passed by an overwhelming um, uh, margin, uh, voter turnout very low, as you might expect, expect on a, uh, a nice fall day on a Saturday. Um, so, but nonetheless, uh, very, very overwhelming majority in Ohio County supported it, almost 90%. Uh, and of course, a lot of the funds are earmarked to improve things in Ohio County. Now, the key is, and I think our local delegate Sean Fluharty alluded to that this week, is to make sure that when this work is being done on the roads and bridges, that West Virginia workers are doing the work. That's one of the whole things about this is to put people back to work, to give people jobs. And so we want to make sure that West Virginia workers are doing this. So I hope that the uh, governor and the legislature really looks at this and makes sure that West Virginia workers are doing the work on this. That's one of the big reasons that I was in favor of uh, this particular amendment is that not only because it will help our state but also get people back to work. Speaking of helping our city, our state, one of the things that continues to bother me and I mentioned this you know a number of months ago on the show is that these signs that I see all over our city, all over our community, you know, advertising, you know, steak fry here, garage sale here, yard sale here, this event here, for house for sale if you can turn left here. It really, really is junking up our city and our state. When you go into other communities, you just don't see these signs. We need to stop doing this. You know, part of making our state attractive to outsiders, making them want to come here, is having a nice appearance. I don't care where you go. If you walk into a restaurant, one of the first things you do is see does it have a nice decor, does it have a nice appearance. When you walk into a doctor's office, you know, the first feeling you get is how it looks. You know, and then later on you determine how the doctor is and how he treats you and things like that. But you know, the, the perception of people when they first come into somewhere is what sticks with them. First impressions mean a lot. And the first impression when you see signs all over the place is this is junky. So we need to do a better job of making sure we don't have these signs all over the place. I hate them. I, I can't stand it when I see them when I'm driving on the roadways. And I hope that our city council and our other government officials will do something to make it so that we can't have these all over the place. We don't have these all over the place. And if you're putting them out there, please don't. And if you feel the absolute need to do it, then go take them down as soon as the event is over. But I don't think people should put these on our public roadways or on the, on the grass near the public roadways. It just doesn't make it look nice. I see things stapled to telephone poles. Um, please stop doing this. One other local note is that don't forget, you know, last week we talked about some uh, the fall at Ogilvy and uh, the next three weekends are Boo at the Zoo after you know, coming off the heels of Ogilvy Fest last week. And Boo at the Zoo, a great event for kids and the entire family. Um, I was so excited that I was approached about uh, my firm sponsoring one of the candy stations this year. We agreed to do that uh, because I look forward to going there every year with my kids. So, uh, you know, Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, the last three weekends in October, you can go up there to Boo at the Zoo. You, know, you go around, go trick or treating. Kids can dress up with the costumes, ride the train, you know, see some of the animals when they're out. Uh, so a good time for the whole family. So be sure to take that in. It's a great time up there at Ogilvy. And uh, while you're up there, you know, get a meal, uh, do something else up at Ogilvy because it's a lot of fun up there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll have my guest Brenda Danehart with me. Stay with us on the Jamie Bordas Show. Tractor trailers are some of the most dangerous vehicles on the road. There are federal rules for load sizes, driver's hours, and maintenance for a reason. When big rigs don't follow these rules, entire families can be torn apart. We have the talent and the resources to take on these large companies. Hopefully, through our work, families are being helped and trucking companies are getting the message about safety. Bordis and Bordis, fighting for justice. So, how was your first day? Ugh. Long. So, Josh asked me about you. Daddy's home. Go get him. For your home, for your life, for more than 50 years. The Hardwood Specialists. The Noon Lumber.
Welcome back to the show. This is my favorite time each week, and this week I'm really excited because my guest is Brenda Danehart, longtime news director here at WTRF. Maybe she can critique my performance a little bit here on the show. But, uh, you know, Brenda, uh, you're recently inducted into the West Virginia Broadcasters Hall of Fame after your 36 years in your career. And uh, September 30th was proclaimed by Mayor Glenn Elliott as Brenda Danehart Day here in the city of Wheeling, which was really cool. But congratulations on that great award. Thank you. What, was that not cool? I mean, I can't believe the uh, city council and, and Mayor Elliott did that. But it was quite an honor to go down there and accept that proclamation. And it was really an honor to go on September 30th and be before. Um, we had a really, really good turnout from Nexstar, our corporate, obviously, owner. And, um, of course, my uh, my. Um, Big boss, I guess I'll call him since I have boss in my head. My big boss, um, Perry Sook, was also inducted into the West Virginia Broadcasting Hall of Fame. He began his career at WWK in Charleston and now owns 171 television stations. So that too was an honor to be inducted at the very same time as Perry Sook was. You know, one of the great things about the induction uh, ceremony was that your longtime colleague and friend DK Wright put together a wonderful tribute video that was played down there that day. And I'm not sure many people have seen it other than those at the dinner. So uh, why don't we take a look right now? That'd be great. Brenda Danehart came to WTRF in 1981. People like her come along not very often. People like her that you immediately know that girl's going to make it. One of her first stories was at the Hare Krishna Palace of Gold. And I remember looking around thinking, oh my gosh, this place is just gorgeous, you know, that they built this beautiful place. Um, but I didn't realize that you had to take your shoes off when you had gotten there and, and said, you know, will they give my shoes back? And he thought, he probably thought, oh, for heaven's sakes, what a rookie. Over the next 36 years, she covered it all. I, I do remember when President Clinton came here to campaign and he actually walked up to us when we were standing there. That was really, really cool. On 9-11, after the attack on America, Brenda and Frank and the news team at that time, uh, at the end of the news, had a community type meeting that uh, calmed the people down in our community. Brenda Danehart is first class. She's the kind of person that you are lucky enough to be able to work with, but more importantly, lucky enough to know. Uh, of all the years I've known her, she's been very consistent. She's always got a smile on her face, and she's up when everybody else seems to be down. She's kind of been the face of our valley in the news and uh, always had that smiling face. And that's what I always, when I think of Brenda Dayhart, I see that smile no matter what day it is or what time it is. And she's done such a, just an outstanding job. And this is an, an honor that's probably long overdue. And we're really proud of her. Brenda has hosted countless telethons and still does. She has empathy and compassion. She could see what other parents were going through at the time and realize the hardships that they were facing. And someone who cares about this community, uh, uh, a mother, a wife, uh, a leader, uh, she's all that wrapped up in one. To complete me, I needed this job and I needed to be a mom and a wife and because of my wonderful family, I was able to do all of that. So I feel blessed. Her career continued and she still gets the highest compliment a journalist can aspire to. She always worked hard to get the facts right. So if she said it, you can believe it. I've been off the air for 16 years, I think it is now, not um, other than doing telethons and people still remember me. She's always so gracious to everybody. She really liked for me to tell you this story. But when I say everywhere we go, I mean everywhere. We were at a funeral together. And seated, the service was about ready to begin. And uh, a very nice lady spotted Brenda, gets up, comes to her, and asks her to autograph the funeral program. And Brenda, not wanting to disappoint her, hesitantly autographs the funeral program right beside the picture of the deceased. And she's beautiful on the inside and out. And uh, when we first met her, she was an anchor and uh, now the, uh, running the news department. Now back to the Palace of Gold. Uh, Brenda, I want to say I always loved working with you. You're very nice and kind-hearted, very welcoming. And I'll make sure next time when you come, you don't have to take your shoes and we'll have shoe cover for you. I'm just really proud to say that I liked my job, loved my job to the point that I wanted to stay at this television station and do my whole career there. To this day, I still consider her truly a friend. The community looks to her uh, and we're so very honored and privileged to have her in our world.
You know, what a great job DK did with that uh, story there and uh, what a great tribute it was. And to see some of the, the old faces that people may be used to have seen Steve on WTRF. Yes, yeah, Steve Major, Jerry Eshman, uh, John Dominic, all the different uh, folks that you worked with over the years. Frank O'Brien, yes. who people still see as part of the CVB. But uh, see those different faces and it, it makes people remember, gosh, she has been here a really long time and <laughs> been doing this for a while. It's funny, you know, when I see people, they'll always say to me, are you still there? You know, because they only see me maybe on one telethon a year and I'll say, yeah, I'm still there. I'm behind the scenes. I'm the news director. And uh, some people will call and say, did she die? Is she still? So I have been here just for a just a, a very long time but you know when you can say that you've been somewhere 36 years and you still love what you do that's pretty amazing i had a gentleman at the uh, broadcasting hall of fame and he asked me if i could expand my resume and i said no <laughs> i can't expand my resume because i've only done you know one job for 36 years so i just um i'm proud of that i don't think that happens too often anymore um so that that's what i'm particularly proud of well, and, and to see the folks, you know, I always say oftentimes the people you work with know you best because you spend so many hours at work, uh, you know, oftentimes more time than you do with your spouse or your That's family right. members. And to see those folks and what they think about you that have worked with you so closely over the years, and then now you're getting to work with a whole new set of people. But, you know, I think that speaks volumes for uh, you and, and not just the fact you've been here so long, but the people think so highly of you that work with you. So. Well, thank you for saying that. We were told that we had five minutes to speak at the um, Broadcasting Hall of Fame ceremony, and, and I kind of thought about that for the, for the longest time, and I'm not really a person that can stand up and talk in front of people for five minutes, especially I, I'm kind of uncomfortable, and I'm sure we all are talking about ourselves, even you know if it's about our career. So I thought, who do I turn to to, you know, just kind of do a synopsis on my my career here and and I couldn't think of anybody better than DK who's been here even longer than I and she's also not just a co-worker she's a friend yeah we need to take a break when we come back we'll talk a little bit about the changes that Brenda's seen over the course of her career stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas show disasters happen pick the team that takes care of them all powered by offices in Wheeling Morgantown and Pittsburgh Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration is ready to handle any size emergency at a moment's notice. We have the right people, knowledge, and equipment to respond 24 hours a day. I'm Dana Hogerson. When disaster strikes your home or business, tell your insurance provider you prefer the restoration company the Mountaineers call. Panhandle Cleaning and Restoration. Fighting for homeowners. Fighting for workers. Fighting for children. Fighting for mineral owners. Fighting for patients. Fighting for policyholders. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice. Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking with WTRF News Director Brenda Danehart, who's my guest this week, who was recently inducted in the West Virginia Broadcasters Hall of Fame. And a lot of changes over the course of your career. And of course, you've been off the air for the most part, as you alluded to, for about 16 years now as the news director. But, you know, some of the big changes, of course, the station now has is both the CBS and ABC affiliates. That's got to change things a little bit. It does. It does change things. That, that's a big change. Um, technology obviously changes all the time, and I'm no technical guru, as everybody knows, but I mean, that's changed just, you know, immensely. But I think maybe the biggest change is what I do now. You know, when, when I started, I would walk in and I would pick up a paper and see what some of the headlines were and just, you know, make some calls and find out about stories. Well, I don't do that anymore. My first thing is I go to Facebook, I go to social media and I see what everybody's talking about, whatever, whether it's on a sheriff's department post or whether it's just on, you know, maybe some of my colleagues, wherever it might be. And then I see what everybody's talking about. And that's how I formulate some of my stories. So, you know, years and years ago, social media when I started wasn't even thought of and you know, we didn't have phones. Um, so it um, it's really changed the way we do things. Everything has changed. Well, let me ask you about that a little bit too, because you know, it used to be, you know, you had to get things ready for the the, new, the noon news and then the, the six o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news. And now, you know, you got to get that story out there 
on social media on your own page on social media and right. you know beat every, try to beat everyone else to the punch and stay current with things throughout the day. Again, when I started, you know, if you had an exclusive story, whoever had that exclusive story, everybody was just Shh, don't you know don't don't breathe a word of it. Now it's as soon as you get that story, it's on Twitter, you know, it's on Facebook, it's on the web. Everything is there first and then we do the on air and and that was really hard to get people especially veterans to think about that change and still today it's hard to do that because they want to work on their on air story first that's how they were taught that's yeah. you know what that's how we were told to do things and we had to get that change put it there now you also have digital people in your newsroom which you never had either i have a web manager that works you know eight hours a day or longer if needed and i also have a part-time web producer so that's a very important part of our newsroom staff now and they are you know that's where young people get their news they're not waiting for the six o'clock to come on so we have to take that story give it to them in a different form and then hopefully push them, give them something that they don't, that they really want to see, they don't know about yet, and then push them to our on-air products. You mentioned earlier, you know, uh, WTRF is now owned by Nexstar, and, uh, you know, Perry Sook, CEO, uh, has 171 stations, so right. kind of a change there, too, you know, not just a, a station in Wheeling, West Virginia, but part of this much bigger operation that, uh, that you're a part of, and that can, I'm sure, bring some positives and bring some challenges as well. Yeah, um, the, the positives I'll start with, and you, uh, you know, you and I didn't even discuss these questions, but they're great questions. Um, oh, the positives um, about Nexstar is, you know, we, we are now sister stations with WCMH in Columbus. So and I now have a reporter every single day, Monday through Friday, that is our Seven News Ohio State House reporter. That's a guy that works for six different stations, just our six stations in the region, and goes out and gets whatever's talked about in Ohio. We always wanted to do that balance with West Virginia and Ohio, but we were always West Virginia media, so we always kind of, you know, we lean toward West Virginia more than Ohio, and a lot of our viewers are in Ohio, so how do you get that balance? Now we're getting that balance. We have a guy stationed right there through WCMH because WCMH is next star. Tonight we have, um, uh, uh, Wednesday evening, we have the Issue 2 Forum on, and that's coming from CMH, so people can learn a little bit about what they're going to be voting on. Things that we could never do before under next star, and it's exciting. It, it just really is exciting. Ohio State, tons of Ohio State footage now for our Ohio State fans. Always had WVU, but now we can balance it out with Ohio State. You know, we talked a little bit about the, the, the social media and how your veterans had to become accustomed to that, but now, you know, one thing you do have is you got this uh, pool of talent of young people now that are, you know, on the air and working with you and just even walking around, the, you know, the, the, the station here, you see these young folks and uh, you probably learn some things from them. You, you absolutely do. You know, they're great at Facebook Lives and that's the big rage now. You know, you go to a fundraising event, you go to whatever it might be and you do a Facebook Live and you, it's like you're pulling people right into where you are and that's fun and they get that. The young people in, in the door get that. And you know, what people sometimes don't realize is WTRF is, you know, we're, we're 158th market size. We're a smaller station. So people come here, they want to get that experience and then some choose to stay here. But but some also choose to go on, so it's a great stepping stone after they get their experience here. And people sometimes um, don't understand why we lose people, but that's just natural, you know, in the in the sure. size market we are. We're we're a teaching station, and then they go on to bigger bigger stations. You, you mentioned er earlier that you know you still do some telethons, and uh, people see you on the air for that, and uh, that's got to be rewarding work. I mean, over the years, people have seen you on the Easter Shields telethon and other things, and. Uh, it's got, got to be some of the, the best things you've done. Yeah, probably what I'm most proud of, honestly, um, my work in the community. And I, I did the muscular dystrophy telethon for uh, between 25 and 27 years. I've lost count of in, until they just um, didn't do them anymore for smaller stations. Um, so I loved doing that. And, you know, I, I met uh, some of the greatest families. Um, and unfortunately, many of those children have now passed. Um, and it's just, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, but I guess I feel really positive about, you know, the, the good things that we did to raise money for research so that things do improve and they do find a cure for, you know, many of these muscular dystrophy diseases. Um, and now I do, I work for Easter Seals, which is right here in the Valley and, um, it's great. The people are great. The kids are great. And you make a difference. So, you know, news makes a difference, obviously, but we feel as being a big community station that we can make a difference by doing community stories and teaching people about, you know, let's say the United Way and how they help all those organizations. And um, we, we help the community that way. So I, I feel good about that. We saw in DK Wright's uh, package that, you know, 
you were involved, when President Clinton came to town, you were there, 9-11 happened, you know, you were involved in, in bringing that news to people. What, what's perhaps the most memorable story that, that, that you can uh, share with us over the course of your career? Probably 9-11. Um, I remember where I was, I was standing in the old newsroom then and looked up and when the first plane hit and then just thought, oh, you know, what a terrible accident. And then the second plane, you know, we, we all know that, um, that horrendous day, but, um, you saw Reverend Cummings there and Reverend Cummings, I remember he came on to, it might have been the very first day following that, and he asked us all to join hands in prayer. Well, that just, you know, had never been done, I don't think before. And we did that because everybody was so afraid and, and didn't know what to think about anything. They were horrified, obviously. And um, that was just a nice local touch that we could all, you know, just, um, you know, say a prayer and just, you know, then move on to what we needed to cover. But I, I just remember that day like it was yesterday where I was and how he was so such a calming effect on on everybody in the valley and he still is he's just a wonderful gentleman wonderful before we have to to go to break you're a big Steelers fan anybody that knows you knows that so uh you know it's a disappointing uh week here last week and uh what's what's the rest of the season hold for the Steelers you think you know I I, I don't know the answer to that but I saw everybody on Facebook you know or not everybody but some people jumping ship saying you know Ben's done if he's questioning himself he's done but come on we're not done you know will we be a Super Bowl contender I hope so I, I know you're a fan too I mean I hope so I love the Steelers and will this be Ben's last year probably probably will but he's not done this year he's going to be back and will we beat Kansas City Mm, I'm not sure, but he, he'll be back. He'll, he's, he's not going to give up. Well, thanks so much for being Thank here today, Brendan. Congratulations me. on Thank your you. award. I, I've enjoyed it. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'll talk sports and give you my prediction for the Steelers this week. Stay with us here on the Jamie Bordas Show. for more than 50 years, De Noon Lumber. Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports and we'll kind of start right up where we left off, uh, which is the Steelers. And, you know, disappointing game last weekend. Big Ben throws five interceptions, career high, and, you know, two pick sixes. And, in the post game comments with the media, you know, gave people a little bit to talk about when he said, maybe I don't have it anymore. I think, you know, he was down after the game. He was trying to deflect some of the, the questions, et cetera. But, you know, I, I don't think Ben's washed up by any means. I mean, you know, a lot of the media is making a big deal by the fact that he's had six touchdown passes, seven interceptions this year so far. Well, okay, before last week's game, he had six touchdowns and two interceptions. Uh, so, you know, yeah, is he not having the best start to, to a season? No, but it doesn't mean he's washed up. I mean, look at his stats from last year. I thought he was trying to force the ball to A.B. a little bit, maybe because of A.B.'s antics the week before and some of the things that went on between Ben and A.B. and the media. Uh, maybe tried to give him the ball a little too much. But, you know, the bottom line is they need to get back to running the football, playing good defense, and, and they've got a shot. But now, this week they've got the Kansas City Chiefs who are undefeated. Uh, but I think the Chiefs are due for a loss. You know, Pittsburgh went into Kansas City last year in the playoffs, knocked them out of the playoffs. I think they go in there again and rebound in a big way. The Steelers usually do that after a disappointing loss. I think this week's no different. they got to face a, a well-coached team with Andy Reid, Alex Smith, the quarterback, and Kareem Hunt, the running back for the Chiefs, averaging over 100 yards a game rushing, really uh, causing everyone to kind of take notice of him. But I'll say the Steelers do bounce back, and they win this game on the road by three points in a big game toward ultimate home field advantage in the playoffs later on in the season. Let's talk college football. I was so excited. Last week I gave you four upset specials, all unranked teams on, well, three unranked teams, one ranked team on the road 
facing higher ranked teams and I hit three of the four. LSU beat Florida, Michigan State beat Michigan, Stanford beat Utah, just like I said they would. The only one I missed was unfortunately WVU. Uh, couldn't get past TCU. A pretty good effort, but you know what I said in that game, you know, about that game was if WVU has to settle for field goal attempts early on, that's going to be a problem. That's exactly what happened. You know, they made one, they missed one, but they, they didn't convert in, uh, their opportunities early on, and that made a big difference because I knew they were going to have to outscore TCU. Uh, but Iowa State did knock off Oklahoma in the Big 12, so another road upset there. So there were four road upsets in the top 25. I just was one that I didn't predict them, uh, missed one. But this week, interesting in college football, no game between two ranked teams. Very rare for that to happen, especially in October. Um, the Mountaineers do look to rebound against Texas Tech, who's ranked number 24 in the country. That game will be at Milan Puskar Stadium in uh, Morgantown at noon. Uh, again, I would say this week, once again, watch early and see if the Mountaineers are able to convert touchdowns or if they're settling for field goal attempts because Texas Tech averages over 46 points per game, number one scoring offense in the country. Uh, WVU can score also, but they can't stop anybody, so they, they need to get some early points. I think they will, and I think being at home makes the difference. I'll take the Mountaineers by 10 over Texas Tech. Then at 3.30, check out number 10 ranked Auburn at LSU at 3.30 on CBS. I think LSU does it again this week. I think they, this time at home, the last time they were at home, they had an embarrassing loss to Troy a couple weeks ago. I think they beat Auburn at home. This will be a game between two defenses, you know, knock them, sock them type game, and I'll take LSU with the home field to knock off number 10 Auburn. And then uh, at 7.30 at night, you know, check out another local team, Ohio State at Nebraska. That game's on FS1 at 7.30. I think Nebraska hangs around for a long time in this one, but Ohio State pulls it out in the end. Ohio State just too much talent for Nebraska, who just really seems to be floundering the last several years. Their coach, Mike Riley, probably on the hot seat. Uh, it just a once proud program really, really seems to be struggling out there at Nebraska. And, and I hate to see those storied programs when they're not doing well. Uh, you know, I, I want to see the Nebraskas of the world do well, the Oklahomas, Ohio State's, Notre Dame's, Alabama's. I think it's good for college football. It's good for sports when those teams are doing well. It's also exciting when others st step up, but I like seeing the traditional powers do well. Uh, speaking of which, Notre Dame off this week. They get a bye week, and then next week they'll have USC in a night game in South Bend. That's one that I've been looking forward to for a long time. Uh, and I think will be a big key in Notre Dame's season. Notre Dame's now up to number 16 in the AP poll, and they've got five ranked opponents left. If they can run the table, they will be in the college football playoff, but that's a big if. I mean, a lot of teams, they got to get by there, including USC next weekend. That's all the time we have this week. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate Brenda Danehart being here as our guest. We'll see you again next week on the Jamie Bordas Show.